Hi everyone, welcome to Multiplicity Crafts. It's Miranda, and today I'm here with a watercolor card, actually two, that I'm making with Q-tip cotton swabs. So these are actually for Mother's Day, but you could use them for any occasion. And we're gonna be using just plain Dollar Tree uh, watercolors. And then on the other card, I'm gonna be using Distress Inks. I'm going to be turning the distress inks into watercolors so both of them will have the watercolor effect. Now before I get started, uh, if you do hear any background noise, I do have both of the cats in here with me. They wanted just to be here with me so um, if you hear purring or anything of that nature you'll know why. <laughs> so anyway I'm working on um, watercolor paper and I like to put a little bit of wax paper behind it simply because um, if I get a little bit of the paint, you know, that doesn't go on the card. And it, I mean, it would be okay if it went on my craft mat, but I'm just kind of, um, you know, particular. So I put the wax paper underneath there. And then I just put a little piece of washi tape up at the top just so the paint doesn't go on the back of the card where it does not belong. Now all you have to do is just really wet your watercolors or wet your Q-tip. And all we're doing is very, very simple circles. It's so easy. Anybody can do it. Even a kid could do this. But yet it gives it a really nice effect when you're finished. So I'm just doing these pretty much the same size in all corners. Just four round red circles. Now these are going to be roses. It will look a lot better once we progress. So we are going to do the same size in all four corners and then uh, once we get these four finished then I'll do some little smaller ones. Now notice how I wasn't real particular about keeping them exactly on the card and even about making them exact circles. They're just super easy, don't stress. Here I'm going to go ahead and go in and make the smaller uh, roses. Again, they don't look like roses right now but they will. So. Uh, I'm just doing two on either side, okay? So it, it almost makes an L shape in each corner, if that makes sense. One on the one side and one on the other to make the L shape. And then um, I tried to get them somewhat, you know, similar, you know, looking or similar size. But again, it really doesn't matter just as long as you have the basic shape. Now for the leaves, I'm using the opposite end of the Q-tip, obviously, and I'm putting in some green. Now I started just with a green dot, and then I'm just kind of dragging that out just to make it look somewhat like a leaf. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be outlining these with a pen. And so as long as you have the basic shape of a leaf, you're good to go. Now these watercolors are literally from the Dollar Tree. They're just cheap kids watercolors, but yet you can make some really nice effects with something that you only paid a dollar for. I do have some linked in my uh, blog post. I have that linked below in the description. So if you want to um, check that out, I also have some linked as um, Crayola brand. You can get like at Walmart or anywhere like that. Now to outline these roses, I'm using the American Crafts uh, Fine Liner Pen. It came in a set. These are very affordable. Um, and so these do really, really well on, on top of the watercolor. But you'll notice that sometimes my pen is like kind of not, I don't know, it skips a little, but it's not really, it's the, not the pen's fault. It's my fault because I was impatient and I started drawing on there before the watercolor was dry. So you'll see here from time to time I kind of scribble um, my pen on a scratch piece of paper and that's all I'm doing there is just trying to get the watercolor off the tip of my pen. So don't let that be any reflection of the pen's quality. It was just my impatience just trying to, to rush this. I guess I could have heat set this watercolor but you know, you know. I just kind of went for it. So anyway, basically all I'm doing is just spirals here. You just want to, um, you know, make just you. Okay. So let me, let me back up on the spirals. You can make them kind of, you know, on purpose broke up and irregular looking, or you can make them perfect. Okay. So some of them, 
I did kind of break up. Now on the leaves, all I'm doing is just little C shapes. Um, you know, just, it's real easy. Just leaf shape. I mean, that's pretty basic. And then I'm just putting a little line down the middle. But uh, as I was saying, you know, you can you can decorate and do what you want. You can do like, you know, perfect little spirals. You can, you know, it's up to you. But it's just really, really freestyle. That's kind of the feel of this card is not too contrived. Just very freestyle. And here I'm making what I call whirly gigs or <laughs> swirls. And basically that's just going to look kind of like vines. Um, basically all you do is just, it's more or less like swirls, like the S shape or like the number six, um, you know, just real basic, you know, you can practice if you want, but again, this card's real simple and I'm taking just a little tiny dot of red and I'm making little rosebuds on the end of, um, a few of those vines just to give, you know, tie everything together and give it a more cohesive look. So that finishes the frame for card one. Now let's move on to card number two. And this one, again, I'm doing with the Distress ink. And I'm turning this into watercolor. So basically I just smushed the ink onto an acrylic block because it'll wipe off perfectly clean from that. And I just went in with a wet Q-tip and I'm doing the same thing. I'm just making circles. Now, I use the double into Q-tip because uh, on this particular card, I'm going to do two color of roses. So I'm doing the kind of fuchsia pink color, and then I'm going to do a um, kind of an orange shade. And I will have these Distress inks linked in my description box below on my blog. And again, I'm doing the first rose, if you will, or circle larger and then I'm doing the ones that are to the side of it smaller. So I have this sped up because you pretty much get the idea just L shapes in all four corners. And then for the leaves on this one I didn't have a green distress ink and so what I'm doing is just mixing the yellow and the blue which is mustard seed and peacock feathers and I'm just going in with my little spritz bottle and just adding more water to kind of lighten up the pigment and I have a perfect green. It's kind of um, almost, it's not really a lime green, but it's not just a dark, dark green either. And for these leaves, I'm just doing dots because I'm going to draw tiny, small leaves for this one. It's kind of hard to see here. It, it, the color is a little bit off, but in person it does look more green. And again, I'm just going in with the spiral shape. And that's super duper easy. Anybody can do that pretty much anybody. <laughs> and so again, I'm just going to speed it up because it's, you know, repetitive. You get the idea. And then just little C shapes on the little tiny leaves. Now to finish these cards off, I added a few things and I want to show you on each card what I have did and what I've added or what I'm going to add. So let's start with the first card. Now on the first card, I went ahead and cut the middle a panel that's going to have the sentiment on it there. I went ahead and cut that out of my Gina Marie dies. I have those linked and basically you just want to, if you want to mimic this or have it look like this, you just want to put your sentiment in the middle and the sentiment I used is a, from Jilly Bean um, Soup. Wow, I about couldn't think of the name of it. And then I just kind of painted some little roses on the bottom. Now I'm going to make a bow for this and I'm going to do what I call a fork bow. And all you do is just serpentine this ribbon in and out. It's just kind of like an organza ribbon. And it's real tricky to do by yourself, but it can be done. You just want to weave the ribbon in and out of that middle they call them tines on a fork or prong, whatever you want to call it. Um, but just weave it in and out of the middle one. And that way your bow will be evenly spaced on both sides. And it gives you a perfect bow. And it's got more layers to it than just a single bow that you would, you know, say you would just tie by hand. And once you have that all wrapped up and you have it how you want it to look, I go ahead and kind of pull it as tight as I can 
and get all, just make sure it doesn't fall off the end of the fork, okay? That's the main thing because I've had that happen before. But get all of it gathered and um, then just get some baker's twine or even thread, just something real thin. And uh, get your bow, scoot it up a little bit on the fork there where you've got some room. And take your baker's twine and just feed it through that little opening in the middle there of your fork. You'll see what I mean here. So if it doesn't go through at first try, you can cut the edge of it at an angle. Or like seamstresses do, you just wet the end of it. You just, you know, nobody knows. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, that part's going to be cut off anyway, so it doesn't even matter. But um, So go ahead and tie this into um, a knot or, you know, at least tie it once so it will stay. And then you can slide it off the fork. And that way you will, um, you won't lose what you've just worked on. So go ahead and tie that off into a knot. And then, like I say, you're going to cut off that end anyway. So just go ahead, once you have it nice and tight, take your scissors and cut it as close as you can to the knot without cutting through the knot. And I use my Cutter B scissors. Even though they're for paper, they really work well on ribbon and twine. Now, I don't know if you're supposed to cross, you know, scissors, use your paper scissors on this or that. But these scissors... I can cut anything and they stay sharp, so I'm not too worried about it on these. And you can leave the tails on your bow or you can cut them completely off. It's totally up to you. And I decided to leave them. You do have to kind of finagle with them a little bit to get them to lay how you want. But we're going to be putting glue dots under this anyway, so I think it should lay down perfectly fine. So I'm just going to go back in with my scissors and cut them a little bit shorter and then I'm going to cut them at an angle so it just kind of gives them a nice finished look. And then just go in with my glue dots and I stick that on the back of the bow where it doesn't show and adhere that down. And then I'm just going to use my glue runner and go ahead and just um, adhere this flat down to the card base. I pretty much have a finished card there. I am going to add a few jewels at the end. Now on this second card, what I've done is went in with my Distress ink and I have inked the edges of this um, die cut. Again, this is the same Gina Marie die cut. And the Jelly Bean Soup stamp is the one in the middle. And then on the little pink pieces of paper you see there, basically I just cut the same die cut, but I used the negative space to give me that scallop look. And it kind of filled in the big white area on that sentiment. Now behind the sentiment I have this beautiful rainbow color ribbon and I'm just going to go ahead and adhere that down with a little bit of double-sided adhesive uh, score tape. That works out really well so you don't have to um, you know worry about making a mess with a wet glue or anything and this this holds it in place perfectly fine. I'm using the end of my quick sticks tool and this has a almost like a little shovel on the end or a pick I guess would be a better word and it helps uh, lift that adhesive backer off of the adhesive and so once I have that adhered down I'm going to go ahead and go in with my cutter B scissors and just cut the excess ribbon away now this ribbon is optional you don't have to put it there but I just thought it needed a little bit of something um, in the background because there was kind of a white area there and I'm gonna go ahead and pop up this particular sentiment I think it just I don't know I just felt like it looked really nice popped up so I'm gonna use my adhesive foam squares and place those on the back of the die and then I'm gonna go back in with my quick sticks little tool and I'm gonna use the back end there where it has the pick and lift the backer off of the adhesive. Once I have all the adhesive backing lifted off, I'm gonna go ahead and press that down into place. So to finish these cards off, I just went ahead and added a few little tiny jewels. Um, if the light catches them just right, you can see them. I put them on the center of each of the roses. Well, actually not each of them, but on a lot of the roses. And then um, on the second card, I just put some uh, down on the sentiment at the bottom and then a little bit at the top just to give it a little bit of shine and a little bit of Something so it doesn't look so flat 
So here are the finished cards and I think they turned out really nice. If I do say so myself, that sounds kind of bad saying it about your own card, but you know what I mean. I think yours would turn out just as nice. They're super easy to make. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it was very helpful for you. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments section below. And again, all the information will be down there in the description box for you. Thank you so much for watching.